Welcome home with Pastor Alice Smith, a program that represents the place that Christ has prepared for us. Good morning. We want to welcome you to the Welcome Home broadcast. Praise God. This Wednesday morning. My name is Pastor Alice Smith, and we want to thank you for visiting us today. Amen. It's a great day. So let's start out in prayer. Father God, we just bless you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving throughout the airways today. We thank you for giving the people eyes to see and a heart to receive your word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's always a privilege and an honor to bring the Word of God to you each Wednesday morning. And I'm so glad that you're listening in because see what's happening is your faith is becoming alive. You're seeing and feeling the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life and you're feeling God's presence even as we go through the scriptures and even as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit is just uh, touching you, touching your heart. And so it's not by my might, nor is it by my power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. So he is available for you today. Amen. There's so much that we need to learn as uh, women and also men about the Holy Spirit and about who he is. So I praise God that you have joined us today. And what we want to talk about today is God's goodness. What does God's goodness look, look like? I know this year uh, has been a really tough year for you and for all of us because of what has happened, what has transpired, what is on the news. There's anxiety, there's fear, there's restrictions, there's bondages. There's many things that are happening throughout our life and throughout this year, throughout you know our, our workplaces and even in grocery stores and places that we used to uh, visit and go to and now we have restrictions you know so I want to talk about God's goodness because see God is available for you today he wants you to see his goodness you know uh, we believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living right while we're living we want to see God's goodness if we're men and women of God we proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. We have the authority, we have the power to see God's goodness. And see, God's goodness is so good that it's everywhere. Everywhere we go, we see God's goodness. We see God's goodness even in tough situations and in tough things. So what I want to talk to you about is about, there's three pillars that I want to present to you today. And these three pillars represent God's goodness. And whatever situation that you may be in, whether you're up or you're down, whether you're depressed or not depressed, whether you have anxiety or fear, or whatever it is that you may have in your life, these three pillars are going to sustain you through it all. Now, I'm not saying that there's not more than three pillars, but these three pillars are what God wants me to share with you today. Amen. And uh, I want to share this because it's important for you to know. And for those of you that are listening today, uh, God gave me this message for our ladies first Bible study. And it was powerful. So he wanted me to share this with you. You see, this broadcast goes throughout the airways. It reaches up to Virginia. It reaches... Uh, all kinds of cities, uh, many cities here in North Carolina. So I want you to hear and talk about, we're going to talk about the three pillars. God wants to teach you something today. So I pray that you have your paper and your pen and your uh, Bible so that we can turn to this, these scriptures. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to our first scripture that we want to look at. It's going to be Psalm let's see psalm 136 verses 1 through 4. so let's look at that scripture here and let's read it together psalm 136 verses 1 through 4. oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever 
O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Now I want you to turn over to, let's see, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, and read the verse with me. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So the first pillar that I want to talk about is God is good. Now see, that's a pillar that we can just stand on. No matter what, what we're facing, no matter what's going on, we can always say that God is good because he's good. It's not just a cliche. God is really good. His mercy endures forever. And let's look at that scripture. It says here that he is God of gods. You know, he's Lord over all. And you notice in the scripture, it says God, he's big G of gods, which is little G. So when you're representing or when you're talking about almighty God, you need to capitalize that G because he is good. Amen. And when you capitalize G in God, you're giving reverence and honor to God because he is God of gods, meaning he's over everything. There's nothing greater than God because see, God is good. And when you talk about him being, God being the Lord of Lords, that's capital L again, Lord of small L's, Lord, which means he's over all Lords. There's no Lord that's higher than him. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have to give thanks unto God. And we have to remember that God is good no matter what has happened? I know some of you may have lost loved ones this year. Maybe some of you are have lost your job. Or maybe some of you have lost just hope. You've lost hope. But see, we have to trust God. We have to trust God and we have to remember that God is good. No matter how you feel, He's still good. Your feelings does not dictate that God is not good. Your feelings does not say or emotions does not say that he's not lord over lord your feelings should not dictate that but you should say within your heart within your soul within your mind that god is good that's the first pillar for you to stand on today amen and i want to give you another scripture let's look at psalm 57 verse 7 Psalm 57, verse 7, and it says, it reads, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. So we have to get to the point where our heart is fixed. No matter what's going on, you have to say within yourself, My heart is fixed. God is good. I don't care what happens. I don't care if the earth falls down underneath my feet. I'm still going to proclaim that God is good, amen, because he is good, amen. His mercy endures forever. And see, in this particular psalm, David wrote this, and he was fleeing or running from Saul, you know. Saul was chasing David because, see, David was going to become, he had already been anointed to become the next king. And Saul and his men were after David to slay him, to kill him. And so he was going through a, a troubled time. He was going through some tremendous fear, some tremendous anxiety, like some of you are today. But he settled within himself to say, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. So we have to settle it within ourselves that no matter what it looks like, no matter what people say, my heart is fixed. I trust you, God, and that you are good. Amen. Can you say that with me today? No matter what it looks like, no matter how I feel, my heart is fixed, O oh Lord, and you are good. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, the second pillar that we want to talk about today is going to be God provides. 
Amen. Doesn't God provide for us? Doesn't he provide everything that we need? Amen. And I want you to turn to, um, let's look at Psalm 104. God provides. And first, let's look at 136, Psalm 136, verse 25. And it reads, Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. See, there's a point in time where you have to realize if God's going to feed the birds of the air, if he gives food to the insects, if he gives food to the bears, to the lions, to all the animals in this kingdom, surely he's not going to forget about you. Surely he's going to feed you. Surely he will uh, provide for you. Because the scripture says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So God is going to always provide. He's always known to provide for his people. If you look at the Bible and you look at all the scriptures and the, the, um, the incidents that happened the, to the people, these were normal people. These were not like supernatural beings. These were normal people just like you and me who experienced a supernatural God who provided supernaturally to them. Like the widow at Zarephath. Remember how Elijah came to her and asked for her uh, bread and she was about to die her she was fixing her last bit of food for her and her son and she said i'm about to die but see god sent that prophet and that prophet prayed and her meal of her meal did not um did not um become empty it was filled for three and a half years because that's the time in the famine and she was provided with a a, a barrel of meal to eat her and her husband I mean not her husband her and Elijah and her son ate for three and a half years because God is a provider he will provide for his people for those that are dependent on him for those who trust him he will provide for you amen so I want you to believe God today believe God today for your miracle amen God is available for you today and let's look at the third pillar. This is good because see, this is God explaining to you who he is. And I'm going to do a series on God's goodness. And so now let's look at the third pillar. The third pillar is God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And the scripture is Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. And let's read that together. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. So see, all things are in God's hands. God is in control. He sees the end and the, and the beginning and the end. He sees everything that concerns you, concerns your life. He knows everything about you. See, we only see in part, and we prophesy in part. But see, when the fullness comes, that's when Jesus comes. We'll see and know all things. But right now, God knows everything about you and about your situation. He sees where you're at. Amen. And I just want you to uh, be encouraged today that God is good. God always provides and God is sovereign. So if you re remember those three pillars today, God is going to bless you, and he's going to bring blessings your way. And I want to pray for you. I, there's someone out there today that needs a job, and I want to pray for you because, see, there's a anointing on our ministry for jobs and also for cars. So I want to pray for you today. So if that's you, I want you to come and put your hand on the screen today. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would unlock the door for that person to get a job, Lord. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they will receive that job within two days in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for what they were believing you for will come to pass now. And that they will receive and remember that you are good, Lord, and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pray that you have received that prayer. 
And if you need further prayer, I want you to call us. Our 1-800 number is on the screen. But I want you to remember that God is good, God will provide, and that God is sovereign. So write those scriptures down and go back over them. And let the Holy Spirit minister to you today. In Jesus' name, stay tuned for our, our musical selection. God bless you. Welcome you back to our broadcast of Welcome Home. 
God bless you. My name is Pastor Alice Smith. And you know, uh, we were talking early in the broadcast about God is good. Amen. The goodness of the Lord. Amen. And so you see, you are believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so what does his goodness look like? You know, his goodness can happen so many times to us that we take it for granted. So his goodness is he gives you life, health, and strength. Also, there's goodness of the Lord that you haven't even experienced yet. Maybe you haven't had your first grandchild. Or maybe you haven't been married yet. Or maybe you haven't received that, that perfect job yet. And when you receive those things, receive the things that God has for you, then you begin to understand God's goodness upon you. You begin to not take it for granted, but you begin to give God thanks for what he's doing in your life and how he's moving in your life and how he's uh, blessing you and how he's keeping you and how he's just, um, just re you know, providing all of your needs. Amen. And see, that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we love. And so I want to talk to you this, 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 at this time about what is it that you want the Lord to do for you? What is it? Is this your time for a blessing? Is this your time for a miracle? Is this your time for a healing today? Amen. See, God, he has everything. He can provide you with everything that you need. Maybe you um, have strayed away and you just need confirmation that God loves you. Amen. And if you need a word today, I want you to call our 1-800 number. We have prayer warriors online ready to pray for you and also to give you a prophetic word. So I pray that if you want or need encouragement today, I want you to call our 1-800 number. We have uh, prophetess and we have prophets uh, in our church and in our ministry. And Pastor Ray and I, myself, are prophet. Pastor Ray is a prophet, and I am a prophetess. So if you need a prophetic word today, you just need to hear what God is saying about your situation, I want you to call us. Amen. And also, for those of you that have uh, dreams, and you've been having several dreams, and you don't, don't know what they mean, and you would like a dream interpretation, God can provide that to you today as well. See, God has given us the five-fold ministry. So we have the five-fold ministry in operation as the apostles, prophets, prophetess, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. So we have, God has equipped us with the giftings. So if you need a prophetic word, or you need a dream interpretation, or you need a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a gift of faith, Whatever it is that you need today, I want you to call us because we want to hear from you. God wants you to reach out and ask for help today. Maybe you need to be um, prayed for. Maybe you just, just, just don't know what you need, but you know you need something. You know you need God because you can't go on functioning like this. You can't go on living like this. I want you to call us. And maybe your situation is a dire situation where... You've been believing God for healing, and you've not seen it happen yet, but yet you still have faith to believe God. And see, there's no thing that's too big for God. There's nothing that's too small for God. God can heal you today. Whatever that sickness is, maybe you have a, a brain tumor, or maybe you have cancer, or maybe you have kidney failure, or... You just have a, a, a ton of sicknesses that you want God to heal you from. I want you to call us in faith. And we're going to believe God to heal you today. Today is your day. See, it's time out for just, you know, these prayers down here. God wants you to believe up here for miracles, signs, and wonders. Because see, he's a miracle-working God. God is good. It says in Psalms 140, um, by verse 9 it says the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works so see his mercy is there available for you and maybe you've messed up and uh, you've gotten off track and you need prayer to come back to the Lord and the Holy Spirit is convicting you even right now 
I want to pray for you, even if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You want to receive him today. I want to pray for you. So let's pray. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that man or that woman, that girl or that boy today. That if they need to know you as Lord and Savior, that they will open their mouth and pray this prayer. Say, Father God, I ask you now to forgive me of my sin. I repent and I turn from my evil way. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin and come and live in my heart today. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very simple prayer. But just know that God hears your prayers. And it says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, for with the mouth, confession is made, and with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. For so if you have prayed that prayer today, then you are born again. Amen. We must be born again in order to see the Lord Jesus Christ and in order for our names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So now it's your turn. It's your turn to turn to the Lord and to receive Him and to start reading your Bible and start praying and asking God to help you and to get into a Bible-believing church. Join the church. You can join the House of Prayer Ministries. We have an online ministry if you're far away. But be a part of the body of Christ because, see, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back, and you have to be ready when he comes. So I pray that you have received that prayer today. And if you need further prayer or you have questions, give us a call. Our 1-800 number is on the screen. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Amen. Hi. I want to welcome you to our tea thought for today, tea meaning the thought for today. You know, we were talking about sowing and reaping. So you see these beautiful flowers? So there was probably many seeds or maybe a few seeds that were sown. And you see how this big harvest of beautiful flowers are shown here. You see, God shows us this for our life. And I want to talk to you in scripture, um, Genesis chapter 49, verse 22. It says, Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. So, you know, Joseph was uh, Jacob's son, and Joseph had a, you know, terrible, kind of a terrible life in a way, but then he began to blossom. He began to uh, climb over the walls. He began to be the second in charge of, with Pharaoh. So his life was blessed. And so just as this plant is blessed, your life is blessed. As you plant seeds, as you sow seeds, good seeds into the ground, God's going to bring forth the harvest. He's the one that brings the harvest forth for us. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's broadcast with Pastor Alice Smith. We invite you to tune in next week as we continue to explore the place that Christ has prepared for us. Welcome home.